Hi there everyone, Jack here again at The Vinyl Voyage. At one time or another, it's been every record collector's dream to open up their own bricks and mortar record store. I'm no different, and it just so happens that one of the closest record stores to me has just been put up for sale. Now I'm kind of in between employment at the moment, so this was an amazing opportunity to kind of realise a dream and do something that I've always wanted to do. So I thought I'd go and take a closer look. So this is me outside Barney's Spin Vinyl in Retro Grahams. This is the shop that's up for sale in Inverness. So there's stuff in the window. Steely Dan, Kate Bush. So there's a number of rooms to the shop. This is the front room. You can see absolutely stacked with records. There's loads in here. Some t-shirt merch as well. Lots of buttons and other little collectibles. Down here absolutely loads of seven inches. Predominantly second hand stuff, but there is some new records also. This is good, uh, Paul. That's um, why he wants to sell this shop and open yeah. shop in, in, in uh, Elgin. I well, see, so he wants to open one in Elgin. Yeah. Because he has to travel all the time. It's quite a good location here as well. Yeah. You're quite close to the. Actually, the shop was before in different location. Ah, okay. And that place was much more better, I would say. Well, the other location was better. It's like corner shop. Ah, okay, yeah. And there's two streets and very visible. There's an elf from El Albi. Yeah. Roundabout. Ah, there. yeah, I know where you are. Oh yeah, and this was crazy. There's, I get there when I was going to shop. So yeah. Yeah, one time I got really rare record. If you know the Bashti Bunyan. Okay, a load of different rooms. Wow, he has a lot of stock. Loads of stuff in here. Could be th hunting through this for days. Loads of merch as well. Speaking to the guy there though, I think he's looking for offers over 60,000. So, I'm always open to offers, you know. Good man. I'm never like struggling with price. For this PS4 from Morgan. Some cool posters. Yeah. The metal ones. The last few times I've been in the store, he's not been, well, I've came to the store, he's not been around. Is he only open in a certain number of days? The shop? Yeah. No, we, we open Tuesday, Tuesdays, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh. Another room crammed with records. Is it literally everywhere you look? Don't know if there's a light switch in here. <laughs> Record hunting in the dark. But yeah, loads and loads of stuff. There we go, it's a bit better. I found the light switch. Let's get some cassettes. More records. Right, I think maybe time to stop videoing, time to do a little bit of digging, see what I can find in here.
There we go, that was the store that was up for sale. Barney Spin Vinyl and Retro Games. Mm, need to change that name. Vinyl Voyage Records. That sounds a bit shite. Might need to change my own name. Anyway, I had a great day digging, looking for records, going through all the stock they had. There was absolutely loads there. I also had a good time chatting to the guy working in the store. He was a really sound guy. He was into his prog. He was into Pink Floyd, uh, King Crimson, Italian progressive music. So, yeah, it was cool talking to him as well. But I'm really conscious of the fact that there's a big difference between having fun raking through the crates for a day as opposed to managing the, the business side of a successful record store. So I thought before I make any decisions, I better drop the pros and cons. Okay, the pros, the big one, you get to be surrounded by music all day, every day. You get to listen to music all day. You get to listen to things that you like, try things that you've maybe not heard of. You've got your own big library of music to dig into. Even better, you get to speak to like-minded people every day, people who share your passion for music, giving recommendations, and getting recommendations about music would be a lot of fun as well. Um, and I think that'd be pretty amazing, and it wouldn't even really feel like work, I don't think, that side of it. Another one, more opportunity to gather collections. So I love going out digging, I love going out and tracking down records and hunting through collections to find things. And I think that would give you another avenue, obviously, as a bricks and mortar record store people would come to you rather than you having to go out hunting all the time which I think would be really cool I think I would enjoy that side of it three thinking about the the practicalities of having a record store one of the big ones is it's got to be in a viable location now Inverness is an absolutely beautiful city it's the gateway to the highlands so you get thousands and thousands of tourists there all the time tourists from all across the globe which would make it almost like your own VC within one city because there's people coming from all over the world it's also a university city so you've got this large demographic for potential customers and that brings me on then to competition so there's two other record stores in the city you've got an hmv which as everybody knows is massively overpriced and they all they only deal in new records so they're not dealing in the second hand market and the other record store is union vinyl which is a smaller record shop but a really cool record shop that's got a fantastic location. That's right in the centre of Inverness. A little small shop, but a great selection. Okay, number four then. I've sold records in the past, starting off online and then mainly locally in the last couple of years. And it's something that I've been fairly good at, I think. I've been reasonably successful at it. I've got a kind of loyal little customer base, but obviously this would be on a much larger scale. But if I can do it on a small scale, I think I can do it on a larger scale as well. A reasonable knowledge of kind of general music and then more niche markets as well. So that would be a side that I would really enjoy getting into as well. Number five then, let me see, the challenge of creating something new is a massive, massive draw. I like a challenge, but to create something new and be your own boss and make your own decisions and take the record store in the way that you want it to go, that would be really, really appealing, I think. And finally, the shop itself had a good location it's a really, really spacious building with a number of different rooms. There is obviously a large stock there already and a lot of fixtures and fittings as well that are there already. But <clears throat> the large stock and the, the large room, as much as to me initially that seemed like a real pro, that has its negative side as well. So that brings me on to the negatives. And firstly, the practicalities of owning a record shop in Inverness. Now, that would be a considerable commute for me. Inverness is about an hour away. So firstly, you've got the time factor and how that would impinge on my free time and my family time. And obviously, then there's the cost of petrol getting there every day. And when I look at the region that I live in myself, Murray, it, is, it has no record shops at all. So you'd think that that would be a more viable option to open up a new record shop. Inverness would have more footfall because it's a bigger city. But on the flip side, Murray would have less competition, so that would be a consideration. So number two, and the big one really for me, was the cost of the business. So the owner was looking for 60000 for the business, and that included all of his stock, all of his fixtures and fittings, all the memorabilia and other little bits and pieces, decorations within the store. Now for me, that was far too much, because while he had a massive, massive stock, a great amount of records, 
they weren't high-end records. There was lots of country. There was lots of Elvis. There was a lot of classical, things like Tammy Wynette and Johnny Cash, 80s. And a lot of it wasn't in great condition either. There wasn't, like I said, there wasn't a lot of high-end stuff, really desirable records, which for me meant that the asking price was too much. And while it was all kitted out, the back two rooms were kitted out with Kallax. And while that's great as a collector to store your collection, the collection that you know, you know where everything is. As a customer, a Kallax is not ideal. It's difficult to flip through records in a Kallax. So you would need crates or you would need racks in those back two rooms as well. Um, and into the bargain, it didn't include the building. You know, the 60000 was for the stock and the fixtures and fittings. The building had its own rent on top. I believe it's about £130 a week, which I didn't think was overly bad. But then that's another consideration that you're having to meet that £130 each week before you even break even. So for me, it wasn't financially viable. The asking price was too much. Number four then is another big one for me, the financial risk of taking on a venture like this and whether I'd be willing to gamble on that because I've still got a mortgage to pay. I've got children to look after, food to put on the table, and it would be a big gamble because it's not a ready-to-go store. Like I said before, about the fixtures and fitters would need to change. There would be new stock would need to be brought in because whenever I've been in the store, there's not been a lot of footfall going through. I've not seen a lot of customers there. Obviously, there's the overheads to pay as well, which would make it less financially viable. Not to say that it couldn't work, but it would definitely be a gamble. And at my stage in life, I don't think it'd be a gamble that I'd be willing to take. Number five is the consideration of whether the romanticism of being a record shop owner would be considerably different from being someone who manages a business. Now, I love my hobby. I'm really, really passionate about music. I love digging. I love records. I love even cleaning and organizing my records. But if that became a job rather than just a hobby, would it still hold the same magic? I'm not so sure. Finally then, the biggest consideration of them all, would my wife kill me if I was to buy a record store? Marriage in one hand, record store in the other? I don't know, because my wife is very, very understanding, very patient, and she indulges me all the craziness that goes along with my obsession around music and records. In fact, hold on, this just in. My loving wife has assured me that she will back me and support me if I do decide to buy a record store. So unfortunately, on this occasion, it will be a no from me, but never say never. Keep the dream alive. Under different circumstances, at different stage in my life, I would still be tempted. This is not the right time for me. I think if it was closer, a better location for me would work, and really a smaller store as well. It was too big. I'd need something a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable, I think, to begin with. As always, thank you so much for watching. I know some people who follow the channel have already owned record stores. If you have, please put in the comments, what did you like about owning a record shop? What wasn't so good? I know that there's a lot of dreamers out there like me who have dreamed about owning a record store. If you're one of those, tell me how close have you come? Would you still like to own your own bricks and mortar record store? Let me know. Likewise, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. It always helps my videos. And subscribe if you wish to watch further videos. Until the next time, keep spinning those records.